Hello there friends, welcome. I've come here to make a video blog on a very simple topic, yet also a really fundamental and important topic for each of us to understand. And the topic is the raw truth of how to get exactly what you want. Now, for each of us to get exactly what we want, there are two fundamental pillars that we must follow. The first pillar is defining exactly what you want. The second pillar is designing habits to get there and then executing the habits to get there. Now, it's a very, very simple model to follow. But let me just go into a bit more detail on each of these pillars so that we have a great understanding of them. Now, the first pillar was defining exactly what it is you want. Define the exact desire. Define the exact goal. And what's really important when we do this is that we are not vague and ambiguous, but rather we are very specific, precise, and detailed. We create a very clear image of what it is that we're trying to achieve. So I will give two quick examples of a really vague and ambiguous desire or goal and then um, a, a much more detailed, precise, specific version of that goal. So the first one could be, I wish to have a really good job. I want to have a really enjoyable job. Now that is very vague and ambiguous. It's hard to achieve that because we barely know what that is. So here's an example of a much more specific and precise version. It could be, I wish to have this specific role or one of these specific roles in this specific industry. I wish to make this sort of impact in that industry. When I work in my job, I want to make this sort of impact in people's lives. As I do the job day in, day out, I wish to carry myself in this sort of way. I wish to bring these sorts of ideas and outlooks to the role. I wish to bring these sorts of virtues to the role, etc. And now I will give one more example of a really vague desire and then the much more specific version of that desire. The vague desire could be, I want to have a lot of money or I want to have all the money that I need. But a much more specific and detailed version could be, I wish to develop financial discipline and financial awareness. I wish to map out all of my expenses for a week and then um, as soon as I get paid just fill up all those buckets and nail all my obligations. Then I will take the rest of my money and put it in specific savings and saving accounts. I will then even lock the saving accounts so that I can only access them by getting off my ass and going into the bank. I wish to um, put money into that saving account every week, week in, week out, so that I always have a large reservoir of money at the ready for when a really worthwhile expense comes up. So that's an example of a much more detailed, precise goal or desire. Now it is so important to have this precise definition of the goal or desire because it is somewhat analogous to having a compass with a really precise needle head that points to north or one which is a uh, little bit temperamental and doesn't point perfectly to north at all times but rather points in the general sort of direction of north so as you're moving around the forest the needle is going to point in this sort of direction and, and it can like uh, vary from here and there but the main point is it's not super precise but to give so much more detail to the definition of your goal and exactly what your goal entails it just makes the needlehead perfectly and finely tuned okay 
And one more little detail I'd like to add to the idea is you will, yes, define your specific goal or desire, but then also create the specific sub-goals needed to get there. And as you define the sub-goals or the stepping stones, that is adding detail to the overall goal. So yes, it is super important to be really specific, precise, and clear in the definitions of what you want. Now, the second fundamental pillar to getting what we want is to design habits which will lead us to that goal and to execute them consistently. It is super important that when we design these habits, we are really rigorous in ensuring that, yes, this habit will lead me to the result I want. So make sure you are thorough when you design it. And then the next super important point is that we execute the habits with, sur uh, with perfect consistency, like clockwork, like the second hand which never stops ticking. It just keeps on doing its thing. Boom, 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 boom. We must execute our habits in the same way, day in, day out, without fail. Because only with perfect consistency is where the results happen. Only with perfect consistency is where the fruits are blossomed and where the power and magic starts to form. Now, in order for us to have this perfect consistency with our habits, to have the perfect execution, it's really helpful to understand how habits work. So I'll briefly go into a framework which I acquired about how habits work. And it was in a book, what was the book called? I think it was called The Power of Habits. Now, all habits have a three-step framework to them. They have the cue, the routine, and the reward. So let's take the quick example of eating chocolate cake. The cue is perhaps you feel hungry. And then the routine is you eat the chocolate cake. Then the reward is, you know, a huge dopamine hit because, um, you know, your body recognizes the calories and it's super pleasurable. There is a reward to it. And all habits, whether positive or negative, follow this sort of process. The cue is the external stimuli which evokes the habit, it evokes the impulse. You know, it is the cue which mediates the habit. Then the routine is simply the habit itself. It is doing the exercise, it is smoking the cigarette, it is the habit. Then the reward is what you get out of it. It is the reason why you would do it in the first place. So when we design a habit, it is super important to not just design the routine, but that we also design a cue and a reward. So when you design a cue, just to, um, purposefully create the certain circumstance that will cause you to do the habit, whether it's a certain time of the day and you choose for that to be you, your cue, whether it's um, feeling a certain way or like whether it's a certain circumstance, whatever it is, just ensure that there is a cue and that you condition yourself so that whenever that cue happens, you do the reward. Whenever that cue, uh, sorry, whenever that cue happens, you do the habit. And what this does is it will simply condition you to always be inclined to do that habit upon, uh, upon seeing the cue. So create a cue which is super consistent and then the habit will be super consistent. And I would say a time of the day is a great one because it happens every single day. And when you design the habit, it's also super important that you are clear on what the reward is, that you have a perfect idea of what you are gaining from this habit every time you do it. Because this will keep your motivation and your inspiration constantly renewed. So it is super worth having the reward. 
Now, in order to achieve any objective, yes, you must create these new habits, but maybe you need to get rid of some bad habits. So just say one of your goals is, I want to be really healthy and vibrant. Um, yes, you will be developing new habits such as good exercise, good nutrition, etc. But maybe you must remove a poor habit like smoking. If you wish to remove a bad habit, what you do is recognize that the bad habit has that um, three-step process. It has a certain cue, it has a routine, and it has a reward. And if you wish to get rid of the habit, simply take away the routine, but you keep the same cue and you keep the same reward. So just say for smoking, the cue was, I feel stressed. Then the routine here was, I smoke a cigarette. And then the reward is, now I feel peaceful, calm, and at ease. If we want to get rid of smoking, we can actually keep that same cue and the same reward, but we take away smoking and we create a new routine. So just say that routine is uh, doing yoga. So every time that I feel stressed, I am going to do some yoga and I'm going to do some really relaxing breathing and I'm going to just stretch out every fiber and invigorate my nervous system, etc. Then the reward is I will, f I will undo all the kinks, I will feel calm, present, vibrant and at ease. So that's just a quick little method to um, getting rid of a bad habit. Keep the same cue, keep the same reward, replace the routine. Now, just in regards to designing these habits and executing these habits, I would say that if the clear desire is analogous to the compass which points perfectly north, then these awesome habits that we've designed are like the steps that we take towards it. And to keep with this analogy, I would also say that if we were to stay where we are, if we were to not really define what we want with heaps of uh, detail, and if we don't execute many habits, and we just stay where we currently are, that is analogous to staying in a somewhat barren and scarce land. But then, to actually take out the compass, to see true north, and then embark on the journey to get there, that is like embarking on the journey toward much greener pastures, to go towards an oasis which has abundant resources, which is aesthetically beautiful, where the breeze and the water just invigorate your senses. That is what it is like to move toward that desire, that goal, all those various desires and goals. That is what it's like to arrive at your dream life. So yes, just to reiterate very briefly, find out exactly what you want and describe it with awesome detail and awesome precision, and then go and execute the habits which will lead you there. And a thing about habits is the more you do them, the easier they get. So that's about it. I wish you all the best on your journey and much love to you.